OK. Yeah, still me, still at Cisco. Uh, so this presentation is about like giving update uh, on the on the uh, speed up uh, of the U probes and like uh, what's the uh, what's the goal to speed it up and how it actually looks like uh, at the moment. I will start like uh, describing like high level. Uh, how actually uprobe looks like how the uh, how the installation look like and then i will actually uh, show uh, what i'm trying to do uh, to speed it up so uprobe user space probe uh, basically you have a file uh, the interface is that you have the inode and the offset to the file uh, where you uh, put the uh, put the probe and when the application actually runs and go through that it will hit the probe and it will execute whatever is attached to the probe, in our case, the BPF program. It's also the way how to implement uh, the user space uh, trace points, USDTs. Uh, they also, like when you, uh, when you attach to it, you actually uh, use the uh, U-probe. It's all very architectural specific. Uh, it will be this presentation only x86, uh, just a disclaimer. So how it actually looks when you want to install uh, the uprobe, as I said, uh, you have the inode and you have the offset. Uh, so you actually uh, need to uh, overwrite that instruction with the breakpoint instruction. Uh, of course, you don't, uh, you don't uh, replace it in the file itself, but uh, when you install the uprobe, you find like all the instances uh, of, that, of that address like being mapped in all processes and you do the installation like in the memory right there. Uprobe also has like callback when you are actually uh, doing the memory map uh, for the file and when you are mapping that part of the file that actually has the breakpoint, uh, it will trigger the Uprobe installation and it will install uh, the breakpoint instruction. So now you have it in the memory uh, when the application actually executes that it's a uh, breakpoint instruction in free uh, on x86 and it will actually trigger uh, the breakpoint handler in the kernel and that's basically the execution of the uh, uprobe at that time uh, it will run uh, the bpf programs or it will run the generic layer which is called consumer for the uprobe one of the consumers is like uh, bpf uh, uh, uprobe multilink or uh, whatever perf uh, handler is there, it will execute the BPF program. Uh, once it is done, uh, it cannot just jump back because there was some instruction that you overwritten with the breakpoint and it needs to be executed before you resume uh, the uh, before you resume the, uh, the execution of the user space application. So there's two ways uh, that you can do at this point. You can either emulate uh, emulate uh, the instruction. That means we are still in the breakpoint handler and some of the, and we have access to the registers from the, uh, from the user space. So some of the instructions you can actually emulate by touching those registers. You have access to the, uh, to the user space stack. So if there's like push, you can actually emulate it right there. And that's basically what emulation does. It will, there are certain, there are like, uh, support for uh, some of the instruction that you can emulate at this point, uh, some jump, push, knob, of course. And when you do that, you can actually return um, back to the user space to continue uh, the execution. There are some instructions that you cannot emulate, and in that case, you need to trigger the single stepping, which actually means that, of course, you kept the original instruction. You need to put it uh, to uh, special area which is mapped uh, to that process. Uh, you can find it in maps uh, under under uprobes, uh, uprobes name. So it will actually get the buffer place, it will put the uh, instruction there and it will leave uh, the breakpoint handler pointing uh, to that buffer. It will execute the instruction and it will set the debug flag which means that after executing that instruction it goes back uh, to the kernel uh, with, uh, with another trap 
So at that point, you actually executed the original instruction, and you can go uh, back uh, to executing the rest of the uh, application. So I guess it's visible emulation is like much faster than the single stepping because you have like this extra probe that needs to be triggered to execute uh, the original original instruction. Uh, so that's entry probe, like when you actually want. Uh, like to be executed uh, right away. What kernel also support is uh, the return you probe, which the idea is that uh, you have a function in the user space and you got executed uh, when the uh, when the function actually returns. So to actually do that, you need to install uh, the entry you probe at the beginning of the function. And the assumption here is uh, that when this entry you probe is actually hit, on the top of the user stack needs to be the return address. Like, assuming that actually there was like another function that uh, did the call instruction to that function, and the return address is on the top of the stack. Uh, what this entry you probe will actually do? It will install uh, the return uh, trump line, uh, so it will actually replace the original return address to. Uh, the buffer in, in the user space application. And when the red is actually executed, it will jump uh, to, that, uh, to that place. And this place actually contains just uh, the breakpoint instruction, which will get us to the kernel. And that's the place we execute uh, the handlers. It will execute uh, any BPF program attached to it. And there's no extra like cleanup. We don't need to. There's no original instruction here we, that we need to execute. We just uh, jump, uh, jump back. Question. So, if the um, user space application had some tricks like, you know, uh, where's Name Young? Is he here? Oh, there is. Like your F, your user space F trace thing that has a, its own shadow stack and does tricks with the return. And then if you add a probe, would that cause havoc? I, I would think so. So <laughs> there's like Go applications that uh, are like maintaining their own stack. And once you actually written something to Go stack, it will actually, Go will find out and like crash the application. So yeah. OK. I just wanted, I was just curious about that. Yeah. Uh, so, that's, so that's how the installation works for U, U probe and uh, return probe. Um, before I actually go to the uh, uh, to the speed ups. This is how we measure it. Uh, there's a trigger bench uh, application. Uh, the trigger bench basically uh, does the loop over like attached uh, probe, and the probe itself uh, executes PPF program that's counting the number of executions of that probe. And uh, like if you run this script, you will basically uh, get like per second number of executions uh, per second. So as you can see, there's like different numbers. We, we have this trigger bench for uh, adding QProbe on the knob instruction, push instruction, red instructions. Both uh, triggers different behavior, as I, uh, as I showed uh, before. So that's, that's how we actually uh, measure that. There, were, there is a question. Uh, Not so much question. I just want to point out like why we have those knob, push, and red, because that's three common cases, right? Knob is USDT, usually. Push is like the normal function call. Like, and the red is yeah. something that's not optimized, basically. So that's worst case. This yeah, is sing single where the stepping. single stepping is yeah. happening. Yeah, push, usually, it will be at the beginning of the function. So that's, that's the common case, yeah. Knob the is the common USDT case. Yeah, yeah, true. And it's millions per second, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there have been recent fixes, actually, uh, speed up. So Andre did some, uh, did some uh, U-probe speed ups that uh, ended up in speeding uh, all of the cases uh, through the, uh, through the U-probes. And there was also a patch from uh, Jonathan Haslam that uh, he changed uh, the locking. I think he replaced the spin lock with the write lock, like some core, uh, core tree of the U-probes. And basically, if you, uh, if you use U-probes uh, through uh, uh, through many threads, you will actually see the uh, see the difference. So that's where, like the recent speed ups in the U probes. 
And it's even worse than that because it's it's one global uh, spin lock per any U probe Anything. or U red probe yeah. instance. So if you use the same U probe on multiple threads or you use multiple U probes on different threads, like they all contend on the same spin oh. lock. And it's only one of the locks. There are like three locks in general taken on every U probe execution, and which is which is like we plan to to address all that. Okay, so more speed up is coming. So. What I've been actually uh, doing here, so when we uh, propose that uh, the idea of speeding up uh, the process, uh, the in a nutshell, the whole idea, like either for a return or entry probe, mm -hmm. is to replace uh, the breakpoint instruction, uh, the trap execution uh, with the uh, with the syscall, and the easiest place that you can actually do that. Uh, as Andre suggested, is the returned uh, Europe probe because it involves no uh, no other processing and the trampoline is already there. So, just to uh, sum it up, uh, basically, as I as I was just explaining how returning probe works, you install uh, the U probe at the beginning of the function, and that U probe changes uh, the top of the stack, like the return address, which will eventually uh, hit, uh, it will be executed by when the function is uh, returning. And at the moment, there's this in free instruction, and the speed up is basically to replace uh, that in free instruction with the new syscall, which actually does everything uh, uh, that the uh, trap handler does. And but it's syscall, and it turns out to be actually uh, to be actually faster. It's not just simple like that, just calling the syscall. There's, there's like uh, some other instructions, like to save the registers, make it all uh, uh, work with the current uh, running ap uh, application. But basically, it just executes the syscall, it runs the handlers, and it uh, returns back. And the speed up. Uh, is uh, visible. We actually get on the Intel, on the latest Intel laptop, you can get like 30% uh, speed up uh, on some recent, uh, ah, not so recent uh, AMD. I can see uh, like the less speed up. I guess the speed up very much depends on the architecture, on the micro architecture, like how much the syscall is actually faster than, uh, than executing the, uh, the breakpoint. Uh, I'm wondering if the difference in speed up is due to the mitigations. I mean, I'm wondering is the because uh, I believe AMD does not need the uh, heart boot or is it the what's the uh, meltdown mitigation, and Intel does need the or at least so uh, I definitely so this speed up is measured with the mitigations enabled. Yeah, but I'm saying is it detects on boot up it'll detect oh we don't need this mitigation it just turns, it turns it off. So I'm wondering if one of the reasons why Intel is, you know sees a bigger change is because maybe the, it's got a mitigation. Enabled oh, due to because I remember meltdown is only meltdown only affects Intel. It does not f affect AMD. Hmm. Okay, might be that might Actually, I, it may not be the reason, but that, I'm just wondering if that's something you could look at. Yeah, I didn't check that. Good point. So that's the speed up for the uh, return probe. It's been posted. It's uh, it's hitting some issues with the actual uh, security shadow stack. Uh, uh, on the Intel, so that's being like sorted right now. Hopefully, it will get sorted soon, and this will actually uh, go in. So the harder part, which is basically uh, there's not much work done, just the idea, uh, is the actual uh, the U probe uh, speed up, like the entry speed up, uh, entry point, uh, entry U probe uh, speed up. So the idea here is again to replace the entry. Uh, the breakpoint instruction uh, with the jump or call to the trampoline that would execute uh, the syscall. Then somehow we need to execute the original instructions and jump back uh, to the application. Uh, that has uh, many issues. Uh, what has slightly less issues is actually USDT speed up. So USDT uh, is like user space uh, trace points, which are uh, implemented uh, by the uprobe. And basically, uh, at the moment, we are using uh, step probe, uh, system step probe uh, macro to actually, that will 
uh, like the install, uh, the trace point in, in the application, and it results in putting the knob instruction, and that's the place where you will actually uh, attach, attach, attach the U probe, and uh, it will get executed uh, for the uh, for the probe. If the idea, I think. Uh, uh, it came from Alexei during the discussion that we can actually maybe change that macro uh, to emit 5 bytes knob. And in that place, we can actually easily change that 5 byte knob to uh, call to the trampoline that will execute uh, the syscall that will take care of the EPROP executions and run back. Still, it has uh, issues, but you will eliminate the issue of like running the original, original instructions. And yeah, what are the issues? So at the moment, uh, uh, where I am stuck, stuck, and what I'm actually trying to figure out is the uh, is like safe update uh, of the uh, of the user space uh, uh, instructions. So it's basically like how to safely uh, go from the uh, knob five executing knob five to executing uh, the trampoline. If you have like uh, multiple uh, multiple threads or another thread going to the place that you are actually trying to update, it is an issue. The application uh, crashes. So uh, I guess it's uh, actually coming from like uh, at the moment we are installing just a single breakpoint. So this is not an issue if you are actually changing uh, more than one byte, uh, adding like an instruction which is more than one byte. That's uh, that's an issue. Another issue is like executing of the original instructions. Not all the instructions uh, that you uh, that you overwritten can be actually. Uh, not every instruction can be executed out of line. Like uh, some of them also can have like some other thing which uh, depends on where the uh, uh, instruction is executed. So it's another issue uh, that comes uh, to the thing. And the last issue I can uh, think of is uh, that if we actually go with the five byte uh, call or jump, you have four bytes uh, for the offset. And you cannot jump with the four bytes through the whole space of the user space because it goes like, it can be like 46 bits or even 56, I think, bits. Uh, so that means whenever you install the uprobe, you would need to have like nearby uh, trampoline to be accessible easily. And I actually uh, can I tried and ignored. I qu question. Can you go back two slides? To About yeah. knob 5, right? Like, I just want to point out that knob is like there's an entire zoo of knobs on Intel CPUs, right? Yeah. On x86. And uh, from what I tested, knob 5 is not optimized. So, like, if we just do knob 5 in USDT, it will be a big regression on old kernels. Oh. So, so that's, what I, that's why I was proposing to actually replace it with knob 1 and knob 4. And then kernel can detect this pattern and replace them as like one thing. And that will still be backwards compatible in terms of performance with old kernels. Mm -hmm. Still gives you five bytes, but uh, yep. as two knobs. Yeah, I actually, if you ignore all that, uh, I wanted to just ignore and try. Uh, so the speed up is actually <laughs> what is expected. Like uh, what we saw from the previous, like we get like two to three point three x uh, speed up by using the syscall, not the uprobe. So that's actually something. If all the issues can be solved, um, that's what will be the outcome. That's, that's what will be the speed up of the UPROP or the USDT. And yeah, I have, I have talked actually to uh, some of the memory management guys. Yeah, the, the update of the, of the instructions is tricky. Mm, the current thinking is maybe the int3 is special with regards to Intel. It might actually have some implication on, on the flushing of the caches. Maybe iCache gets flushed when you actually replace and you execute the uh, breakpoint instruction, so that's why it's not crashing. If you actually replace it with the call in instruction, maybe that's a different way. So one of the idea is that we, maybe we can use uh, something that the kernel does at the moment when it's updating uh, the calls. And the idea is basically that uh, before you write uh, the call instruction or the jump instruction, uh, you start with the int3, so any other thread going to the place will actually go to the uh, 
uh, to the debug handler. And the debug handler knows that there's update going on, and it knows like what should be done if we should like where should we jump if we should just jump uh, to the next instruction or there should be jump uh, to some other place. And mean, meanwhile, the updating thread will actually write the offset behind the int three, and as the last uh, thing, it will write uh, the opcode of the instruction. So that's that's basically the idea of the safe update that might apply to the user space as well. Yeah, so um, it gets tricky when, and I know um, Masami has way of code, special code to do when we do this for optimized K-probe. So you, you want to look at the optimized K-probe hmm. way of doing things because uh, it may not even be safe to do it this way. For example, um, so if, like how big is the syscall um, or uh, what do you mean? The, the syscall opcode is like, I mean, how many bytes is Syscall is like two bytes, I think. Is it two bytes? So, mm -hmm. uh, so let's just say you have a single byte thing that you're going to end up on or something, and there's another instruction that's on the second one. It's if there's two instructions that you have to modify in there, that's where it gets tricky. We I'm may actually to... not putting there the syscall. I'm putting the jump. Wait, the jump. Well, or the syscall. You also need to prepare at least one register, so it's it's even more complicated. Yeah, so well, yeah, I'm so well, yeah, yeah. Jump to a yeah, piece yeah, yeah, of yeah. Code. Or I'm saying anything you do, anything that's more okay. So I, let me just go back to say the only thing that Intel has ever said was okay to write once is the in three because that's a single byte. It's, you know, swap it, bump, and it's made for that purpose for debugging. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to modify the rest of the code, you there you got to look at. It gets a lot more complex. It's something you really want to talk with Masami about because he did this for the optimized K probes. And there's cases where if you're modifying more than one byte and there's something that jumps into that code, or mm. there's a lot of weird things that can happen uh, for arbitrary code that you're um, injecting into. Mm. And you've got to look at like the whole function. I mean, the optimized K probes will not optimize if it determines that, hey, this is not safe to modify more than one. And you might actually have to do like the same code that the. Um, uh, In this case, it's user code, so. It's user code, too, but then still, you don't know, like, if you modify something, because it's still running, right? Oh, I'm saying it's even harder because it's user code and they can jump whatever, wherever. Yeah, exactly. You don't know what it is. It's like you don't even know the function, so it might Wh get. Which is why USDT is a like an easier case because we do control the layout of the instructions right in the in the macro we can put like right. not five right. not right. one right. not four right. but right. Right. and and basically assume that no one should be jumping in between them right because that's controlled by you know by it's like the macro that's like puts the knob there so it shouldn't be like accessible from another place i mean it sh it is accessible but no one should jump there. <laughs> yeah, but, well, it, well, you never know if it's, well, it could jump there. You, know, you, you have to put a bunch of single in, interrupts, I guess. That might kind of work, I guess, if you put single interrupts for everyone. Well, the general approach with you probe is if user space does something fancy or wrong, we'll send sig ale to them. Well, it's like, well, for example, if they use your ad probe and then they uh, change the stack pointer, for example, and like we cannot match it yeah. on function return, we'll just kill the process. Yep. So, you know, like in this case for UGC, we, we can s just say like no one should be jumping in between those two knobs. And yeah, was, well, that's true. The one thing is if it does crash, it kills the process. So yeah. the worst thing is going to happen. Someone's going, hey, let's inject some U probes in this code. Then suddenly the thing crashes. So just it can happen. <laughs> it yeah. did happen. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. There is no safe way of doing it. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, the other issue uh, is like yeah, if we are going to use the five bytes jump, which, which is actually probably the best uh, best alternative. Uh, as I said, we have this four byte offset, and user space is much bigger than that. So we might end up like installing like multiple uh, multiple user space trump lines like to be reachable from that place where we actually want to put the jump. So and yeah, there are other issues, but. Yeah, one at a time. So when we get there, we'll see. Do you have any questions? Just a dumb question. Uh, is it possible, like, instead of like knob one and knob four, to have like a knob one and knob eight, or knob eight? <laughs> I don't know if this exists, but so like, a, like a bigger knob so that you can have a bigger offset, or. So I mean, how does that really help you have a bigger no-op? Um, you know, unless you're talking about injecting in the code itself, or 
Oh, that will that will address the four byte offset. Yeah, yeah. So we can use the bigger jump if we have bigger jump in the instruction set. Yeah, yeah, it's used. Oh, okay. So I mean, if you have to, because it doesn't solve the problem if the co if it's not. Yeah, you still have this thing. You have to modify something. Yeah. So yeah. Well, yeah. There was actually like notion maybe if we have knob big enough that we can actually put inside the syscall execution, but the syscall is not just like you can execute the syscall, you need to pre pre prepare the AX register and like push push it even and push like syscall instruction itself, like changing to other registers. So you need to all push and pop and you will not fit in any other in the longest knob, which is maybe 12 bytes or something. I'm, I'm not sure now. Something like that. There's probably 15 or 16 byte Are instruction it? that we can use. But yeah, yeah. I, I checked like what we have there now and it couldn't fit, but yeah. But like, is, is there a, a jump or call with more than four byte offset? Uh, there is. Uh, How long is it? The instruction? The thing is that you need the prepare the register for it. I don't think you can. Oh, there, there's no like jump immediate was like immediate being 64 be, bit. I think it needs to be in the memory. Yeah, uh, that's why it's like open question I didn't like explore like further. I, I, I just figured out that there are jumps like that, but you need to prepare like either some register or put the address to some, uh, to some memory. So it's all adds new com complexity, which is at the moment, it seems like this five byte node jump is the best. I think there's an indirect jump uh, instruction, and you can put the address right after the instruction, the byte. So. Ah, oh, like after the instruction, you store yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll check and on that. You can just offset of zero, then we will. How, how big is that read. instruction? I don't remember. But you can, you can use eight byte offset, uh, eight byte address. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't have much idea about USDT, but uh, so if you want to change knob one byte knob to five byte, however way, but uh, you have to change the system tab header, right? Yes. And does that break any kind of like USDT contract? Well, I briefly discussed this with uh, Frank Eichler. Like, yeah, he was concerned about maybe some benchmarks, like uh, in the performance implications that can this actually have. So, if you actually go this way, the benchmarks and like visiting what it can mean for the existing applications to using this, that's something that needs to be done for sure. So, I just want to say thanks for the work by Jiri, Andre, and John. Really excited. But also want to mention Unoma's BPF time, which is the user space BPF stuff that they say, and probably makes sense, can make U probes 10 times faster because we're not going into the kernel at all. Mm. Uh, I, I can think of situations where I need this instead because I have programs that do both kernel stuff and user stuff at the same time. Whereas other programs can be entirely U, uh, user space and our runtimes like BPF trace could make that determination, take a tool and say, oh, it's only U probes. I'm going to use BPF time instead. But if there's a mix, I'm going to go and use this one. Um, I'm just wondering if you can think of other thoughts where we, just so that we, we clearly understand where we're going, uh, why would I use this kernel stuff instead of, say, a user space implementation? And at the same time, if you're making changes to how we dynamically instrument U probes, maybe there's, like if you, if you actually had the BPF time source and you're looking at it, maybe there's some overlap of like, uh, you can make changes to support either at the same time. If you're in this, if you're making changes, there may be, may be some um, opportunities to, to improve both, both types of uh, U probes at the same time. Are you familiar with uh, Libside? No, Libside. What Libside, is Libside? It's Matthew Denoy's uh, project he's working on. Libside is uh, L-I-B-S-I-D-E or something like that. Um, we actually are looking at hooking it with the user events, but it's actually he's using it for his user space tracing in LTTNG, which is all user space. It doesn't go into the kernel. And it's a way to actually, we would be putting in like trace events inside. Um, you could 
put in like trace events or whatever using his thing, and then it, it's basically anything registered to it. It'll be BPF could register it, any just register. So basically, it's a spot that he's working on, and we're actually work use. I know the Microsoft folks are use are going to be using that for um, uh, the user events. So libsite SID. Libsite. SI, yeah, I think it's SIDE. Maybe was that Matthew? Matthew Denoy. Okay. Yes. Okay, that, that sounds, but you can see my point, like you're changing mm -hmm. the code that writes the uh, assembly, maybe there's ways for these different mechanisms to register themselves with the kernel and say, hey, write me into user space or write the mm. kernel one. Sure, yeah, it's definitely worth of checking on that. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, thank you very much. Thanks.